All right, man, peace. So many months ago, a certain brother asked me in the comment section about sex addiction and if I had any type of advice that I could give him in order for him to be able to handle his sex addiction issue. And lo and behold, the CBS Morning News had a segment on sex addiction because I believe it was Kevin Spacey and Harvey Weinstein were going to the same sex addiction clinic. And I mentioned during that video that the main advice that I can give him or any other brother who felt like they were enduring some form of mental, psychological, or spiritual weakness was fasting. And the reason why I bring that up is because this segment here on the CBS Morning News is doing a feature on fasting, but in the modernized form, they call it intermittent fasting because it's, it's used more today for physical health purposes like slimming down the body, losing weight, etc. Um, I'm going to add certain things here and there for certain brothers who may have questions about the various dynamics of fasting, what it may pertain to, and how it can assist them in other areas of their life, not just physically. Anyway, they're going to talk about it. I'm going to chime in. Every January, there's no shortage of new diet plans, all promising to finally take off those stubborn, unwanted pounds. CBS News' Alex Dennis has more about a plan that's not only growing in popularity, but it's also getting results. Let me say this before they start, brothers. Fasting is not just good for your physical, it's also good for your mental. The food that we eat in this society, for the most part, is poisonous, is overly processed, is unnatural. It's, it's uh, scientifically modified, genetically modified, whatever you want to call it. And it's good to not become addicted to the food that you eat. I know that in the everyday hustle and bustle that we have to go through just to maintain our lives, sometimes you have to eat fast food here and there, or you feel like you have to eat fast food here and there. But when you do get started on a fast or you want to change your diet, you should do so incrementally. You should not just decide one day you're going to go from eating McDonald's hamburgers to becoming a stone cold vegetarian. The only thing that you're going to do is end up backsliding. When you backslide, you're going to backslide in a big way. You're going to be one of those dudes in Burger King or McDonald's ordering five Whoppers and three milkshakes and five sides of fries and all that other nonsense. So I would suggest that you do so incrementally. If you're someone who eats a lot of fast food, you should try to, you should try to, um, slowly but surely wean yourself off of that fast food to more natural food for those of you brothers who may not have a woman that knows how to cook or may not have a woman at all you should try to learn how to cook youtube as i always state is a modern day library of alexandria you can learn how to cook take some time out in your day to embrace your culinary aspect <laughs> you know and, you know, try to invest in your own body. You only get one body for this physical existence while we're here on the earth. Try to treat it right. But like I stated, very slowly try to wean yourself off of that fast food because it's not good for you. McDonald's recently came out and acknowledged that now they're going to start using natural meat. Well, then what the hell have you been using for the last 50 years? <laughs> we already know what they've been using. They've, to be quite frank with you, they've been using some human meat as well. Quiet is kept. Allegedly, allegedly, okay, allegedly, they've been mixing human meat in with their um, processed meat. Taco Bell, for those of you who don't know, uses a lot of rat meat that they mix in with other forms of meat, allegedly, okay? <laughs> Point being is this, you should stay away from those establishments. But let me let them continue here. Nutritionist Robin Berry has heard every request. Everyone wants that one answer, that one magic pill, that one magic diet that's going to take the weight off, make them look amazing, and make them fabulous forever. If only it were that easy. No, it's not easy. That's why I stay, brothers. Please do it slowly. For those of you who have built up to the level, it's good for you to go one day out of the month without food and or water for 24 hours. That's real fasting. That's a real fast. No food, no water for a certain dispensation of time. Now, for the sake of this segment, intermittent fasting is a technique that is used for you to eat only a, only a certain portion in the day and then go the rest of your day without food or drink so that your body can just utilize the calories that you took in for that moment 
and that it, and that it could spend the remainder of the day burning off calories. Because according to your circadian rhythms, the amount of food that you intake at certain times is going to affect the, the normal biological processes of your body. Okay, so please understand that. That's why you should enter any change that you intend to partake on your body very slowly. But for those of you brothers who know that you're physically and mentally capable of doing it, yes, you should go one day a month at least without food and or water. Preferably on your day off. If you know that you're off from work that day or if you run your own business and you can do so, yeah, take a day away from food and water for 24 hours. But do so slowly. Only those of you who've built up to that level. For those of you who eat, um, uh, who are... Certain foods, especially meat and fish, etc. You might want to take a day where you don't eat meat and fish. You just eat vegetables that day and fruit and water. And then slowly get yourself to the level where you can go a whole day without eating anything. The hottest way to lose weight these days involves fasting. It's a system that's not telling you what to eat, but when to eat. Our very own John Elliott has been following a fasting plan. My blood pressure is better. It's a little lower. I have less heartburn. I have more energy. And I'm, I actually feel a little more nimble. How is Absolutely. And beyond that, it will also aid you in your mental acuity. A lot of brothers ask me why I'm able to remember certain things or why I'm able to recall certain things with such adroitness or adeptness. Well, first off, that's a gift that I've always had ever since as long as I can remember. But beyond that, yeah, I stay away from certain, from certain foods. It's very important. That's why I make videos pertaining to things like lobster poison, oyster poison. I'm going to make a video soon enough about why you're not supposed to be eating the swine. And that did not change when Christ came. Many people in the Christian church allege that you can eat swine ever since Christ came and did away with the quote-unquote law. According to them, he did away with the law. That is inaccurate. As a matter of fact, when you read the scriptures, Christ himself advocated for the same practices in the quote-unquote Old Testament. That being fasting. He tells you explicitly in Matthew the 6th chapter about fasting and how you should not make a show of it. When you're fasting, brothers, don't tell anybody that you're fasting. That's personal. That's between you and the Most High. Or just you and yourself if you're one of these brothers who does not believe in a higher power. That's a bad thing for you, but if that's the road that you decide to take, that's on you. Maybe the reason why you don't believe in, the, in a higher power is because a lot of your spiritual aspect is blocked because of the foods that you're eating. Who knows? <laughs> who the hell knows? Either way, the scriptures detail explicitly the importance of fasting and how it can aid your physical and your mental when the disciples asked Christ why they could not cast out certain demons, why they could not perform certain exploits that he could, he stated that they needed to fast and pray more. I'm paraphrasing, but you can read about it in Mark the ninth chapter, I believe around the 29th verse. When you read the book of Acts, Cornelius the centurion, he was fasting and praying when the angel came to him. I believe that's in Acts the 10th chapter around the 40th verse, 43rd verse. So on and so forth. In Acts 27 chapter, Paul details how they were fasting during a storm. And the fast that he was referring to was the Day of Atonement, or as it's called conventionally, Yom Kippur, or Yom Kippurium in the ancient Hebrew. It just means the Day of Atonement. That is how you atone for your sins to the Most High. You fast, you pray. All right? That's how you help to redeem yourself yearly. So yes, brothers should investigate the concept of fasting. At the very least, the intermittent, the, the intermittent fasting concept that they're broaching here in this video. How much have you lost? About 20 pounds. And it's not one size fits all. There's so many different variations right now. So there's alternate day fasting when you're fasting for 24 hours and then allowed to eat for 24 hours. There's a five versus two day version. 
in a week's period on two non-consecutive days, you're fasting. Then there's daily time-restricted feeding, where instead of counting calories, watch the clock. The idea is to eat normally in moderation for 12 hours while fasting for the other 12. The eating window starts when you first ingest something other than water. Some of the research shows that this intermittent fasting is working because it's an overall caloric restriction. Let me say this also, since they brought it up. Yes, for those of you who are building yourself up, one of the stages of fasting before you get to the highest level stage where you don't need any food or water is, yes, just one day where you're just drinking water. So many of you brothers, please understand this. If you're starting from a place where you're eating fast food every day, first you should eliminate the fast food. That's number one, if you can. Uh, then slowly, incrementally try to wean yourself off of other forms of food that we ingest every day. Try to limit your dairy. All the dairy does is add a lot of mucus to your system. Uh, try to eliminate certain other foods that you may eat every day that are not going to be particularly beneficial for you if you eat them too much. I personally don't have a problem with meat and fish, etc. But some of the more ardent amateur nutritionists out there who would, would recommend going strictly vegan, that's up to them. I go according to the dietary law and the scriptures. All right, but that's up to you to figure out what's best for you. But should you be eating things like lobster, crab, shrimp, mussels, swine? A lot of the foods that now are being pushed on so-called black people, a lot of these experimental foods. When I say experimental foods, things that we've never eaten, snails, etc. No, you should not be eating that. A lot of so-called soul food is just trash food. Eating the entrails of swine and... Uh, the feet of swine, <laughs> pig snout, raccoon, possum. How people not supposed to be eating that nonsense, man? That's craziness. And that's one of the reasons why, by the way, many of our people have such a lack of self-control. They have a lack of discipline. That's why they state you are what you eat. When you eat trash, you conduct yourself in the same manner. So please be aware of that. You know, sodas, things of that nature, try to eliminate them as quickly as possible. That is almost pure acid. A certain brother asked me about the alkaline diet. Uh, yes, you should try to partake in, in a diet that can improve your, your alkalinity. I'm not a strict adherent to any particular diet. Yes, Dr. Sebi, he had his philosophy and he was a very proficient healer. But he also was not someone who believed in or strictly adhered to the scriptures. He liked to pull certain scriptures to suit his own personal ideology. To be quite frank with you, he was a woman worshiper to the point where he lied and stated that his mother and his grandmother taught him about the alkaline diet. That's a lie. He learned it from, <laughs> from a Mexican man who first introduced him to the concept. But the reason why he stated that his mother and grandmother taught him about eating a proper diet was because that was part of how he chose to market his philosophy, his ideology, was by acting as if he was going to glorify the woman. Your job as a man is to assist your woman and bring out the beauty that's in her. The woman is beautiful and wonderful when she's in her right mind. In this society, most of them are not in their right mind. One of the main reasons is the food that they're eating. A lot of them are eating a lot of fast food. Because they're worried about keeping up with the Joneses, the liberal female mentality is to run to the workforce. A lot of them are going to school for 40 years. <laughs> you meet these broads, 55, 60 years old, talking about them going back to school. Anything to stay out of the house and perform many of the duties that are essential for the maintenance of a productive, quote-unquote, community. That's one of the main reasons why a lot of the food that we intake is so unhealthy. The person who's supposed to be presiding over the intake of food no longer wants to do that. They want to compete with the men. A lot of people are not going to like what I'm saying. That's okay. I don't give a shit. It's all right. It's all right. But yes, brothers, uh, for those of you who are interested in fasting, yes, build up to it incrementally. As I've already stated, it's all throughout the scriptures. Just going off the top, I mean, Esther, the fourth chapter, I believe the third verse, Nehemiah, the ninth chapter, Isaiah, the 58th chapter, like around verses 3. Through 6, uh, Matthew, the 6th chapter, Christ details how to fast. When you go to Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, around the 27th, 28th verse, it tells you about Yom Kippurium, 
a.k.a. Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. So build up slowly. Remember, like the scriptures tell us, the herbs are for healing. The herbs are for meat. All right. So you don't always have to eat that nasty fast food. It's only going to destroy you. That's why a lot of times brothers have trouble dealing with the woman when she starts to rouse up. You get emotional back with her. Why is that? Because you're not eating the right foods, man. We're all human beings. We're all going to get passionate about certain things. But you have to know how to moderate your shit. Because if you can't moderate yourself, the woman damn sure is not going to moderate herself. All right? But yes, you can start off with something like this, intermittent fasting, moderating your, your food intake, what time you choose to eat, especially for those of you brothers who might be overweight. If you're overweight, you have to handle that immediately, especially if you're a brother with a family. I'm not someone who walks around with a caliper to check my body fat index, but I always say like this, if you look down and you can't see your penis, it's a problem. <laughs> You got to be able to look down there and see your penis, bro. If you can't see what's down there, then you have a major problem. According to Barry, when you don't eat for an extended period of time, insulin levels are low and the body starts to use fat as its source of energy. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, when, you, when you decide that you're going to monitor and moderate what time you eat, what you eat, when you eat, your body will adapt. That's why, once again, brothers, there's nothing that man can make that can match with the most high made. The human body is a wonderful thing, but you have to use it. Many of us have trouble getting up in the morning. You have trouble sleeping at night. When you have those issues, you know why that is? It's because you're not eating properly and you're not taking care of your body. Your body's like an essential tool that you have buried in the bottom of a treasure box. You have to open up that treasure box, take that treasure out, dust it off. And utilize it. We only get one. All right. Gee, studies attribute the eating plan to weight loss, fat loss, lower blood sugar, cholesterol, and blood pressure. To get the best results, Barry says most of the fasting should happen during sleep periods to coincide with the body's natural circadian rhythm. If you're fasting during the day, that kind of messes with your body and your body thinks it's sleeping or starving. Another tip, stop eating before 7 p.m. So the Absolutely. I used to tell cats that all the time. I used to tell cats that all the time. Your last meal really should come at about 5 p.m. You really shouldn't be eating anything heavy after that. If you get hungry after a certain hour, eat some fruit, drink some water, drink some tea. Tea is even better. I may have mentioned this in another video. If you notice, in most of the Eastern cultures, quote-unquote East Indian, quote-unquote Chinese, quote-unquote Japanese, they normally will have a hot beverage with their meal. In the Western civilization slash European civilization, we're trained to drink cold beverages with our meals. That causes a lot of food buildup in our intestine, in our alimentary canal. A hot beverage will cause a lot of waste to pass through your system with much more alacrity. Okay? So, you should accustom yourself to drinking a hot beverage, particularly either hot water or tea, if you choose to eat something at night. Because that will aid your body in the, di in the digestion process. Remember, brothers, all this is to improve the functionality of your brain. If your brain is not functioning properly, you're not going to function properly. You're not going to be an asset to anyone, especially yourself. That's why a lot of cats make these bad decisions, man. That's why I make videos about smoking weed and all that. Anything that you're doing that's dumbing yourself down, really, what, what is your purpose, man? What is your purpose? Brothers need to look in the mirror and ask themselves, what is my purpose here on earth? You have to find your purpose. In order for you to find your purpose, your brain has to be clear. It has to be functioning properly, man. Respect the brain that the Most High gave you. Um, so the body can properly digest food before entering the sleeping and fasting state. And good news for John, research has also shown this eating fasting pattern helped you live longer and look younger. It's hard to believe that John would have even more energy than he already has. Yes, he's already <laughs> nimble, believe me. He's he all is. over the place. He is, I know. Well, good for him, for sure. Time now is 8.45. Let's get a check of the forecast now. But anyway, that's it on the intermittent fasting video, or the fasting video really is what I was talking about. They're talking about intermittent fasting, but you can intermix both of them. 
Yes, you should monitor what you eat, when you eat. When you get to a certain level, yes, you should deny your body. Deny your body at least once a month. No food, no water for 24 hours and build up to the level where it's not a big deal. At first, you may have a, a headache or you may have a certain body ache because your body is an organism. It gets accustomed to receiving certain things, whether it be food, water, or whatever. So it may go through a, a certain withdrawal, but you're not going to die if you suffer from hunger pangs for 24 hours, especially once you build your body up. For those of you brothers that pay attention, you may notice that the people that adhere to the Catholic faith celebrate something known as Lent, which normally commences after a day known as Ash Wednesday. Now, as I've mentioned on this channel before, as a child, I went to Catholic school and elementary school and high school. And I was always quizzical in regards to what Ash Wednesday actually was about because it was not in the Bible. But when you become older, and if the Lord gives you the insight to understand it, then you know that Ash Wednesday and Lent have nothing to do with Christ. It is in commemoration of Tammuz. So the people of the Catholic faith, they quote unquote fast for 40 days and 40 nights in commemoration of Tammuz. In the ancient world, it was known as the weeping for Tammuz. Now, it was celebrated at a different time period. So they moved it right after Ash Wednesday, which normally comes right around the time of the Lupercalia, what we call today St. Valentine's Day. So for those of you who don't understand it, as I mentioned before, all of the holidays that we celebrate in this society are in veneration of Asar, a.k.a. Osiris, also known as Bacchus, also known as Adonis, also known as Tammuz. Okay? So, starting from the late fall period, normally around the last week or about the third week of November, starts the Brumalia, which we know as Thanksgiving. That builds up to the Saturnalia, which is the return of the sun after the winter solstice. That is when the birth of Asar is commemorated. After that, you have a 12-day period in which they state that Asar may also have been born anywhere from December 25th to January 6th because in the ancient world, the time of the winter solstice fluctuated. That's where you get the term the 12 days of Christmas from, okay? Because it was a 12-day period where the winter solstice would fluctuate in the ancient world. So 40 days after the winter solstice, you have something called the Lupercalia, Okay, that was the time of the purging or the purification of the mother goddess. Why? Because in the ancient world, after a woman had a child, she went through a 40 day period of purification. Especially if she had a male child, that's in the scriptures as well, that a woman goes through a 40 day period of purification after she has a male child anyway. So that was known as Februa or the purification or the purging of the woman that culminated in what was known as the Lupercalia what we celebrate today as Valentine's Day, which was a day of sacrifice. That is what occurred at the so-called Parkland shooting. That was a sacrifice to Heru or Apollo. So in commemoration of those 40 days of purification, there was a fast, which also commemorated the, the death of Tammuz, who was the God of this world. He represents Christ on the left-hand side. That is what Lent is for where they deny themselves of meat in the Catholic Church. They claim that it is in memoriam for what Christ did in Matthew, the fourth chapter, when he went out into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. But no, that is for Tammuz. So brothers have to understand the differences here and there from the left hand of spirituality in this society and in this kingdom as opposed to the scriptures, because it is very nuanced. But anyway, that's all the topic for another day. Point being is this, brothers, before you undertake any dietary change, if you have a physician, check with your physician, make sure that you understand any health issue that you may have. But yes, you should systematically and incrementally try to build up your body to eat healthier and fast once you build up that strength. But anyway, peace.